What is going on guys, it's Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the updated version 2 of the Fortnite Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. Now the reason for this update video is because a lot of the techniques used to optimize FPS in the last guide are now obsolete and they no longer work. So this guide is here to just update those settings, optimize them further, and give you guys some other tweaks inside of Windows and the game itself to ensure that you get the best performance on the latest patches. And to stay up to date with new FPS guides, updated FPS guides, and other similar content, please do press that subscription button down below as it helps me out a ton. Also, if you do find this video helpful, please do post down some results in the comment section below. Feel free to also ask any questions or queries, or feel free to provide any feedback or request any videos in that comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to get a discussion going down there. And if you guys can also press like on this video and share it around with any friends, family, or teammates who might also benefit from this guide, then that will be deeply appreciated as well. Okay, so moving on from there, let's get right on into the tutorial. So starting off, what you guys need to go ahead and do is go down and navigate to the description down below and download the FPS pack provided down below. Inside of this pack, you're going to be finding the config files and the applications needed to follow along with this guide, just in a very convenient, simple and small pack for you guys. So go ahead, download that. Once it's downloaded, put it onto the desktop. You're going to need WinRAR or 7-zip to unpack this. Just go ahead and download one of those programs from Google if you do not have one. Right click and press extract here. Then once the pack has gone ahead and extracted, simply go into the folder. Inside of here, you're going to be finding the config folder, unpark CPU app, CC setup 537 and timer resolution. If you guys have watched the previous version of this FPS guide, you will see that this looks somewhat familiar, but I can assure you that following this guide will further optimize your game and it'll clean up some of those files that we installed from the last previous FPS pack, making sure it is a better optimized game, making sure that it runs a lot more optimized on your system, whether that be low end, medium end, or high end. So whether or not you watched the original version of this video or you're simply coming into this for the first time, this is definitely going to be the video for you. Okay, so starting off, we're going to be installing the new game config files. Simply go into the config folder and you'll be given two configs inside of here, game user settings and scalability. To find where you need to put these files, you simply need to go down to the bottom left and then type in percent, app data, percent and press enter. Then navigate up to the top and press the app data folder down there at the top. Then go into local, then scroll down until you see Fortnite game, saved, and then go inside of the config folder, Windows client, and inside of here, you're going to be finding just game user settings, or there might be some more files in there. That's absolutely fine. What we're simply going to be doing is going ahead and deleting both the files in our game config folder by right clicking and deleting. And then what we're going to do is grab the ones from the config provided down below and drag them over and drop them inside our game config folder. Once that's complete, we can simply go ahead and exit out of both of those. And what I like to do at this point is also just empty the recycling bin. Now, if at any point you want to go back to the default config, that's absolutely fine. You can just go ahead and delete the configs inside of that folder. Make sure there are no configs in that folder and you can go ahead and boot the game without any configs installed and it will go ahead and auto regenerate some default configs for you. So for any reason you don't want to be using these configs anymore, you can simply just go ahead and do that. Then once we're done installing the new configs, we're simply going to go ahead and open up Fortnite. And then we're going to be booting into the game. Now, once we are booted into the game, we're simply going to go ahead and go over to the battle royale mode. And then we're going to be going to our options menu found in the top right. Press the main menu and then press the settings cog. And inside of here, we're going to be further optimizing our settings depending on what sort of system you're running on. Here at the top, we want to be navigating and setting the game preferably into full screen. You can choose a different window mode if you wish to do so, but I recommend the majority of you watching, you go with full screen. Display resolution, you can set this to the native resolution of your monitor and make sure that the frame limit is set to unlimited. Then we're going to be going over to our 3D resolution. Now this is also one of the biggest deciding factors on your frame rate with inside of game. If you guys are running on a medium end to high end system, I recommend going with a 1080p 3D resolution, or you can also bump that up even further if you wish to do so. But for the majority of you watching, stick with 1080p. But if you guys are running on a low end to medium end setup, I recommend that you guys go ahead and try out the 720p 3D resolution. If you guys want a further FPS in Increase. If you are happy with how that visually looks, then you'll definitely be able to reap the benefits of running with that lower 3D resolution. Draw distance we're going to be keeping on near, we're going to be turning shadows off, anti-aliasing off, and again I'm running a medium to high end system so I'm going to be going with medium textures. Effects we're going to be keeping on low, post processing on low, V-Sync is going to be turned off, motion blur is going to be turned off, and show FPS is also going to be turned on. Once you guys have configured your personal settings, go ahead and press the apply button. Now at this point, another thing I can recommend that you guys go ahead and do, especially for you Windows 10 users, is go ahead and press the Windows key plus G at the same time, and it'll open up the Microsoft game bar. Inside of here, we're going to be navigating over to the turn on game mode option. It looks like a little tachometer, and we're going to be pressing that and enabling it. It should then be highlighted. Then you can simply just wait a few seconds and the game bar will disappear. If that option does not come up for you guys, then simply go ahead and update your windows to the latest version of windows 10 which is currently the full creators update i highly recommend this update it is increased fps pretty much across the board and about 10 to 15 percent boost just natively from updating your windows 10 to that version of windows 10 
pretty much across the board for low-end, high-end high -end and medium-end systems. It runs a lot more optimized and can access your resources a lot more efficiently, so go ahead. Link will be down in the description below if you haven't updated your version of Windows. Or if you don't know which version of Windows that you're running on and you just want to check that you have the latest update installed, go ahead and follow that link as well and the utility will be able to tell you if you're running the latest version of Windows or not. Then once everything is set up how you like, we can simply then go ahead and close out of Fortnite. Now once we've closed out of Fortnite, we're simply going to be going back into the Epic Games Launcher, pressing the settings icon next to the launch option and going to settings. Then on the right hand side we're going to be going to the drop down where it says Fortnite and then we're going to be checking the box for additional command line arguments. Once the box is then checked, simply go ahead back to the FPS pack provided, then go into the launch options.txt and simply copy all of the launch options inside of here by right clicking copy, then go to the box for the additional command line arguments and paste them inside of there. Should look very similar to this, once that's inside of there, you can simply then go ahead and come out of the drop down menu and return to the main menu of the launcher. Now continuing on from those steps, we're simply going to be locating where our Fortnite is installed. So simply go ahead and open up your file explorer, then we're going to be navigating to our C drive, our local disk. Unless you've installed Fortnite somewhere manually yourself, you'll have to find that on your PC, but for the majority of you people who have gone for the default installation, go to your local disk C, Program Files x86, Epic Games, and go into the Fortnite folder. Once you're in the Fortnite folder, navigate to the Fortnite game folder, binaries, Windows 64, and then scroll on down until you find the Fortnite client-win64-shipping. Then go ahead and right click on the client, go to properties, go to the compatibility tab found here at the top, and we're simply going to be checking override high DPI scaling behavior scaling performed by. Now if you do not have that option there, that is absolutely fine. Some people might panic and they might wonder why that option isn't there, but it's absolutely fine. It is OS dependent and also depends on the hardware that you're running as well. So if you don't see that option there or the option is written slightly differently, go ahead and enable the option as well. But if the option isn't there for you guys, that is absolutely fine and you can continue on watching the video. But for you guys who do see this option here, go ahead and check that, press apply and then press okay. Next up, for those like myself who run Discord, we're simply gonna be going ahead and optimizing Discord to ensure that it's a lot less demanding on your system and can take a lot of stress off of, especially when you're using Discord whilst playing games. So to do this, simply go ahead, open up Discord, simply navigate down to the bottom left and go to your user settings found by your profile. Then simply go to the appearance tab on the left hand side. Then scroll all the way down and you'll find an option inside of here called hardware acceleration, which will be turned on by default and we definitely want to be turning this off. Simply go ahead and press the blue switch. It'll then notify you that Discord has to be restart if you want to apply this fix. Then press OK. Discord will then automatically restart and then hardware acceleration on Discord will be turned off. And another more important fix for Google Chrome users especially is also turning off hardware acceleration with inside of Google Chrome. Now Google Chrome extensions often run in the background even when the web browser is closed. So when you're playing your games, these things are running up and using up resources as well. So to ensure that Chrome is running to the best of its ability and not slowing down your system whilst gaming, simply go to Chrome, go to the top right to the three dots, then press settings, then simply go ahead and scroll all the way down until you see the advanced tab, press the drop down menu, then scroll all the way down to the bottom again. And inside of here, you will also find the option for use hardware acceleration when available. Simply go ahead and turn that off. It'll more than likely ask you to relaunch Chrome and you can go ahead and relaunch Chrome and that is absolutely fine. Next, what we're gonna be doing is optimizing Windows itself for general performance and speed by deleting our excess Windows temporary files. So to do this, go to the bottom left and type percent app data, percent and press enter. Then go to the app data folder found here at the top again, go to local, then scroll all the way down until you see a folder called TEMP or temp, double click on that folder and then simply go ahead and from the top to the bottom highlight every single folder and file inside of this folder until you reach the bottom, right click and press delete. It's so that the operation cannot be completed for all folders and files in this folder, that's absolutely fine, simply go ahead and check this box and press skip and if it comes up with that again simply do the same thing. Now everything in there that has just disappeared has simply not been used by your system, it could have been sat there for ages, it's always crazy to find out how much people have actually removed inside of this folder, I hear some crazy stories, Any, anything from around about 10 megabytes all the way up to around about 60 or 70 gigabytes some people were telling me in the comments before which is absolutely nuts so it can free up some hard drive space there and just declutter your system to ensure that we are running to the best of its ability so everything left inside of this folder which you couldn't delete are pretty much the only files that windows is actually using so at this point i'd like to go ahead and go to my recycling bin and hit empty recycle bin and press yes following on from that we're going to be going back into the fps pack provided and we're going to be going to the unpark cpu app simply go inside of the folder and double click on the unpark cpu.exe found here then once you've opened up the manage park cpu application will open and we're simply going to be going to the bottom right and pressing check status this can take anywhere from around about 10 seconds to a minute so just make sure that you go ahead and let it search through the registry then once the search has completed it'll more than likely tell you that the status of your cpus is currently parked if that is the case and it should be for most of you watching simply go ahead to the bottom left and press the unpark all button 
wait for those fixes to be applied and once it then comes back it should then let you know that the status is now unparked then once the status is unparked you can then simply go ahead and exit out of the unparked cpu utility moving on from there we're going to be optimizing the windows power options with inside of your pc so simply go ahead and go to the bottom left and type in power then go ahead and click on any of the battery with the cord around it icons then go to the power options option found here at the top go to the show additional plans and find the high performance power plan inside of here. Select it. Once it's selected, go ahead and go to change plan settings. You can then set these two options to whichever you wish to do so, that's all personal preference. But what we're interested in doing is going to the change advanced power settings found here at the bottom, going into hard disk, turn off hard disk after, go to the setting and double click and set that to zero. Then press apply, scroll all the way down to see processor power management, go inside of here, go to the minimum processor state and the maximum processor state and ensure they are both set to 100%. If they're not, simply go to the value, double click and then set them manually to 100 and then press apply, OK save changes and then you can exit out of the windows power options now what we're going to be doing is ensuring that windows is prioritizing gaming applications with inside of its resource manager and now to be on the safe side we're going to be enabling a system restore point at this point it takes only a couple of seconds to set up then it means that anything we do onwards from this point in this guide can be reverted with a click of a button you simply just go ahead and restart windows into the last previous save restore point and everything can be reverted that's just in case you guys are not happy with how it runs or anything like that or you might run into any issues in the very 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 rare occasion that issues might actually occur. But for nearly 99.9% .9 of you, pretty much everyone watching this, will find a great benefit from enabling this option. So starting off with creating a system restore point, simply go ahead to the bottom right and type in restore. Then go to the create a restore point option found here. Go ahead and select your C drive, then go to the configure tab, turn on system protection, and then go to the max usage and adjust it to around about three to 5%. I'm gonna be setting personally to 3% and then pressing apply and okay. Then simply go to the create tab found here at the bottom, name the restore point something you will remember. So restore from FPS or something like that. You can call it whatever you wish to do so and then press create. It'll then let you know that the system restore point was created successfully and you can go ahead and press close and then press okay. You can come out of the create a restore point utility. That's pretty much just a safeguard in case you guys want to revert or any issues occur or you're not happy with how it runs you can simply go ahead and revert it within a couple of clicks of a button now so now moving on from there and actually applying the windows prioritization optimizations we're simply going to be going ahead to the bottom left and typing in run and pressing enter and inside of this box we're going to be typing in reg edit then press enter again then simply go to the h key local machine folder found here on the top left go down to software scroll all the way down until you see microsoft then scroll all the way down until you see the Windows options. And inside of here, we're going to be going into Windows NT. Go inside of the current version folder. Then scroll down to the M section and find a folder called Multimedia. Double click on the Multimedia folder. Then go to System Profile. Now once we're inside the System Profile, we're going to be navigating over to the top right hand side, right clicking and creating a new D word value. So right click, new, D word 32 bit value, press enter. And we're going to be calling this System responsiveness just like so you can simply go ahead and go down into the description below and these will be ready to copy and paste for you guys in case you don't want to do any spelling mistakes then press enter double click on the key that you've just created and make sure the value is set to 0000, 000 and then press ok then once that's set we're then going to be going down into the bottom left again and then going into the tasks folder then going into games and then inside of here, we're going to be going to the GPU priority key and double clicking. We're going to be setting the value data inside of here to six. It will more than likely be defaultly set to around about eight or a different value. So if it's not set to six, go ahead and set the GPU priority to six. Then go to the priority tab found underneath that and also set that for six. And then simply go ahead and go to the scheduling category, double click. And then we're going to be setting the value inside of here to high with a capital H and then press OK, and then those fixes are then applied. And to make sure that they're set, we're simply going to be exiting out, and we're going to be restarting the system later on to make sure that they are completely applied to the operating system. Moving on from there, we're going to be going into the FPS pack one last time and going to the CC setup 537, simply double clicking, going ahead, making sure get Avast free is unchecked because we don't need it and we're simply just in this installation for CCleaner. Press install and then hit the run CCleaner. CCleaner is a basic Windows utility program to ensure that you guys can go ahead and declutter your systems and make sure that any excess caching files, cookies, and other files like that can be removed from your system to ensure that you have the best running system possible. It's a very fast and simple program to use and I simply like to use it around about once or twice every month. I personally run CCleaner on the first day of every month to ensure that the month ahead I have the best system optimization possible. And I recommend that you guys do the same. So we go to the cleaner option found here in the top left and press analyze. 
Once the analysis is complete, it will come back and tell you how long it took to complete the analysis, and it will give you a basic overview of what it can go ahead and remove for you guys, and it will also tell you at the top how much can be removed. So for me, that's 1.3 gigabytes, which is pretty crazy seeming I only cleared out my PC using CCleaner around about five days ago. So to accumulate 1.3 gigabytes in five days and it can remove that for me, that's absolutely crazy. And if you guys can go ahead and let me know what it can remove for you in the comment section down below, that'd be fantastic as well because it's crazy to hear some of the stories that you guys can come out with. But once the analysis is complete, simply go to the bottom right and hit run cleaner. It'll then notify you that some files will be permanently deleted. That's absolutely fine and press okay. I might ask you to also close down any applications that you have running like Google Chrome or anything. So simply go ahead and press yes to this and then come back to the video. And then once the cleaning is complete, it'll then let you know how many files files it actually managed to remove from you and the overall summary of those files and you can go ahead and see where those files were located and for me it actually ended up removing around about 1.35 gigabytes which is absolutely crazy as I said that's pretty much accumulated over the last five days so if you guys have never run this program before you'll more than likely see shocking results. Again, I recommend using that either on the first day or the last day of every month. Another handy thing inside of CCleaner, you can actually go ahead and see which graphics card you're running in your system. So look at the top there. I'm personally running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. Now this part is very important going on to the next step to ensure that you know which GPU you're running, whether it be an NVIDIA GeForce card or an AMD Radeon card. So just take a quick mental note of what yours says in the top right, whether it be NVIDIA GeForce or AMD Radeon. You can then simply go ahead and close out of CCleaner. Now moving on from there, we're going to be updating our GPU drivers. Now, if you've not manually updated your GPU drivers yourself, it shocks me how many people do not know that they have to do this and you don't remember ever doing this, then this will definitely help boost your FPS and optimize your system further. New GPU updates usually come out around about once every month or so. So if you guys haven't done that in the last month manually, then your GPU drivers will not be up to date. And it is vital to make sure that they are up to date, especially when playing games like Fortnite, which will run a lot better with the further optimized drivers. So simply go ahead, navigate down into the description below and, and click on the corresponding GPU link for which GPU you're running, whether it be an AMD Radeon card or an NVIDIA GeForce card. For you NVIDIA GeForce users, simply go to the website provided down below and click the automatic driver updates tab found here and press the download section, install the program, it will go ahead and download and optimize your GPU for you. If you're AMD Radeon users, it's a very similar process, just simply go to the website provided down below, go to the automatically detect and install your driver utility found here, download now, and follow the same steps as I mentioned before. Let it go ahead, install, update your drivers for you, and it'll optimize your graphics card alongside that as well. And now that brings us to the stage of the video where we can go ahead and restart our systems. Go ahead to the bottom left hand side, right click on your power button and press restart. Once you've then restarted your system, come back to this video and we can continue on. Okay, so now that you've restarted your system and everything is now applied, we can simply go into the FPS pack provided one more time and get the time resolution application out of here and drag it onto the desktop. This program here basically means that it speeds up the response time between the operating system, your hardware, and the game application itself, ensuring that you get a lot less stuttering, a lot higher frame rates, and a lot less input lag, making sure that everything runs really smooth. It's completely safe to use, some people ask me this sometimes, and I recommend using this program with every single game out there, not just Fortnite. So once the program is on your desktop, what we're simply going to go ahead and do is prepare to launch Fortnite. We're going to go ahead and double click on time resolution. Once the time resolution is then running, we're going to be setting it to the maximum state, and then we can simply go ahead ahead and minimize the program. So let's say that we've now got Fortnite open and we're playing and everything and it's running minimized. That's absolutely fine. Once you're done playing and Fortnite is then closed, go back to the program, press default, and then you can then exit out. But assuming that we're about to boot the game, go ahead, double click on time resolution, press the maximum value. So it sets the maximum current time resolution then press minimize, and then we can simply go ahead and boot into our game. And that's pretty much it guys. That is my updated version of the Fortnite Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. Hopefully you guys will be happy with the results and everything will be running swell for you guys. If it is, let me know down in that comment section below and post some results if you can as well. Feel free to go down in that comment section as I pretty much read all the comments out there. And feedback is always more than welcomed and I'm very happy to receive it. If you guys have any suggestions for any new game titles out there that you want me to cover an FPS pack on, or you're looking for general Windows optimization tools, or just general tools or anything like that of the such, please do check around the channel as there'll be other content and feel free to let me know down in that comment section below. If you guys are still struggling to maintain high FPS, there's another couple of videos in which you guys can check out on the channel, which specifically will be the how to optimize Windows 10 for gaming performance. That is an in-depth guide to go ahead and make sure that you're getting the best FPS from inside of games and ensuring that your operating system is the best optimized it can be. Another guide on top of that which you guys can go ahead and check out is my newly released GPU overclocking guide to ensure that you're getting the most out of the graphics card in which you've paid for. There are pretty much no negative side effects to overclocking and there is pretty much around about 10 to 25% performance sitting at your fingertips which is just ready to be accessed by watching that video. You can check out those videos in the description down below or you can check them out on the screen now and at the end of the video. But for now guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Panjano and I am out.